This morning on Sport SA Daily Diary, we chat to South African swimming sensations, Erin Gallagher and Becky Meda. How's it, girls? Uh, Becky, Erin, how are you doing? Today? Very good. Very thank good. You for thank you. Us yeah, we're quite excited to chat to you this morning. Looks like a beautiful day out there yeah. in Dirt. Yeah. It yeah. is. It's been raining for a couple of days, so it's quite nice to see the sunshine. Yeah, it's some clear blue skies. It's really beautiful. Oh, nice. Well, that rain can't uh, help too much with your swimming training. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's just, we're just lucky enough because it's coincided with our, our break. So we, we generally take a, a week, two-week break in April. So we've been lucky that it's kind of gone in with the training yeah. and the weather has kind of met together. Yeah. So we've and, had to... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, we've had, to, we've had our normal annual break. Like, like we, we trained at the beginning of this lockdown and then forced a little bit of a break, and we're picking it up again next week. <laughs> oh, excellent. And how is it that you guys have ended up being um, on lockdown together? <laughs> okay, so my sister studies in the States. Um, on a, she's at Texas Christian University. Um, so, yeah, she's also a South African swimmer. Uh, she's studying now on a, on a scholarship, and she had to come home and she had to be self-quarantined at home for two mm. weeks but at the time no pools had been closed down yet so we were still training and i didn't want to expose any of my teammates mm -hmm. if my sister had had contact yeah, yeah. like come in contact with the virus so i was here with aaron staying with aaron and then the lockdown came so <laughs> just like, okay well, well i'm well staying here <laughs> yeah it's been really nice for me as well because i mean to have Becky motivating me, it's been really awesome. So I think together we've done more exercise than I would have done if I was by myself. <laughs> so I'm really, really blessed that Bex was with me because she's kind of forced me to do something and to do some exercise um, during the break. So it's been really awesome having someone with me. Well, following your guys' social media, it does look like you've been doing a lot. Tell us a bit about uh, hashtag train camp. Oh, wow. We're really, really, really lucky to be part of the train camp family. I mean, They've helped us so much. They've given us the opportunities to travel, like go to Salem Bosch. They've given us opportunities to go and train camps, um, just you know, just to pursue our dreams. And it's really awesome that they're there for us, and you know that they help us and they fund us. It's it's been really awesome, and to be able to represent them is really cool, and I absolutely love it. And yeah, it's just been it's really awesome that I get to be part of a team where my teammates are already, you know. So it's like I know them. We all know each other. We all get along really well, and it's really cool that. We can all promote an, an awesome brand together. And I just think it, it brought us closer as yeah. well. I don't know. I it's just really cool. The train camp team is also just the communication within the team. It's as an athlete, you want that base of support. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. having a team like train camp behind you is mm -hmm. just, you feel almost safe in a way. You feel yeah. Yeah. like you can go in confident that you can pursue your dreams and yeah you can get maximum preparation that you need. And just, they've really helped us yeah. this last season and we're looking forward to working with them in the future. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And tell me, how, how's your training been going? Because obviously you're in a, a normal sort of residential pool. Um, obviously you're having to take turns. It's, it's not as if you can both get in there and race each other up and down <laughs> a, a 10 meter <laughs> pool. Yeah, I think the, the big thing with that is sometimes I mean, for me, I know that my fitness, I cannot control my fitness with using just a stretch cord in the pool. <laughs> it's been very that, difficult, that's, yeah. It's been really difficult. Your stroke feels different, and it's high-intensity training. Oh, my word. Ten minutes of that, and you, it's yeah. very tiring. Um, so for me, I'm using that more of keeping the feel for the water there. Uh, just as a swimmer, that is – the feel of the water is so incredibly important yeah. and it can easily yeah. be lost if you're not in the water, yeah, uh, just sure. in it all the time. So for me, fitness wise, I'm doing lots of skipping, jumping, yeah. running up and down because we can't really leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, getting a bit, going a bit crazy, but it's, it's been cool because some days when Bex is swimming, I'll do some land stuff and then and the next day we would swap it around. Or, or some days we would do it together. Yeah. So it's been really cool. That well, I'll, able to do it I'll together. wake up and do it early in the morning and then do gym and Erin will do it the other way around and do gym and then yeah. stuff. So 
Yeah. And Aaron, I mean, you started very young. You were at the 2014 Commonwealth Games at the age of 15. Uh-huh. That's that's yeah. remarkable. How did it feel as a really just a young teenager to be representing your country at close on this, one of the biggest events in the world? Yeah, I think when I was younger, I didn't really quite comprehend what was going on. I think I was kind of starstruck. I was surrounded with my, by my idols, um, you know, so I think that kind of kind of blinded me to where I actually was on the sta- on the swimming stage. And I think in a way that actually helped because I didn't feel as much pressure. I just went in there, you know, I'm like surrounded by all these amazing athletes, even athletes from South Africa, like Karin Prince Lou. I mean, she was my idol when I was younger. So just to be on the same team as her was just an achievement in itself. So yeah. I think that I was kind of, like I said, blinded to where I actually was and it helped because I could just go and swim and just have fun, you know, and I didn't actually know the seriousness of the competition. Really cool because I was able to have fun and obviously I grew closer to my teammates who have all become my family now. So it's been really, it was really awesome. And yeah, it was just a great start to my career. And yeah, I'm so grateful for those days and the, my, my mentors that I had. And yeah, it was just really, really awesome. And that you then follow that up with a hundred meter freestyle at the, the world champs in 2017. Yeah, it's, it's funny because like when you look back, I mean, I obviously wasn't very happy with my swims. I don't think every time you swim, I think everyone wants to be a little bit faster. That's just mm-hmm. the thing that you get with swimming. But again, I was just really lucky to be a part of that and have that experience. I mean, I, I qualified on the B qualifying times for that trip. So I was lucky to go and lucky to get that experience. And I'm so grateful for every opportunity that I get because it just... I've grown from every single thing that I've gone through and it's it's brought me to where I am today. So, like I said, I'm just really grateful for the opportunities that I've been given. And Becky, have you been a, a swimmer all your life and have you been a swimmer of all the strokes? Because uh, your strength is really the uh, not only um, freestyle, but the, the individual medley. medley. Now, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I swim butterfly, I drown. When I swim backstroke, <laughs> I go sideways. I mean, has it always been all four strokes for you? Well, first of all, I've not always been a swimmer. I hated water when I was small. (laughs) I really, I used to scream. You'd hear me before you, like, even saw me. But um, I only put my face in the water by myself when I was six. The only reason I started swimming was because I used to get bored watching my sister do it. And Mm -hmm. I'm originally from Cape Town. Um, I'm a Cape Town baby, and I started my swimming journey with Tiger Burger Aquatics um, under coach Bianca Marais. So uh, that was majority of my age group base, and I moved to Durban. Oh my word, there's a fly! I'm sorry. I moved sorry, to Durban um, last year, and now I'm under Seagulls and coached by Graham Hill. But yeah, with the Strokes, um, I, I think so. I've been all of them. Um, one of my strengths is breaststroke, but I, with as an I am swimmer, the, being so versatile makes training so much fun. Um, it's yeah. one of the hardest training um, trainings to do because you have to focus on all the strokes and even just in training, changing from the butterfly to the backstroke, and you have to be so focused and you know alert all the time. But it's just I love. I love swimming all the strokes. It just, I couldn't choose one. I had to do all of them. <laughs> yeah. And you guys are, you're swimming with Graham Hill, um, world-renowned coach, uh, coach of Terence Parker and Chad LeClow, Charlene Woodstock. Uh, I mean, he's really had the prime. Are you guys learning a lot from him? Oh, my word, yeah. yes. <laughs> Every day. It's crazy um, to see, like, how much he knows about swimming and, I mean, he just, he predicts things, and every single time he predicts it, he's right. It's the craziest it's the thing. Spin. He'll say, this person's going 27.4 or something. I don't and know. And it's right. And it's, it's right. It's, it's like, it's crazy. How did he get that? You can see his passion for swimming, and I think that's what's so important, is that also why he's such a good coach, is because he's so passionate about his swimming. And over the years, you, his passion's never wavered. It's always been the same from day one. Consistent. Yeah, it's, it's really and awesome. that passion... Um, as a coach will feed into his swimmers. Yeah. So yeah. 
the way he speaks to us at training sometimes and he speaks about these big big goals and yeah. what we're aiming for and sometimes you think oh my word those are so hectic like that's so far away but he says no Bex or no Aaron it's very achievable yeah. we can get that yeah. you know yeah. we can yeah. do that but we have to do it together and it just makes us so passionate mm. about yeah our sport it makes us love it even more yeah and it's really cool because when he believes in the swimmers he puts 110 percent effort into yeah. helping you yeah. achieve your goals and it's really cool to be to have a coach like that and know? having it's, a coach believe in you it's yeah. easy for you to believe in yourself yeah well i was going to say that that really must push the the self-belief and the self-motivation um erin you went to 2019 all africa games and you essentially just cleaned up uh, <laughs> three golds Five gold or three individual golds, five golds in the relay, th- two silvers in the butterfly. I mean, did you even have a suitcase big enough to bring all this stuff back with you? <laughs> it's actually funny enough, I did leave a lot of stuff behind just because my bag was overweight because they gave us these little uh, glass trophies, which were really, really cool. But I didn't want to, and these line mascots, and I had to take them home because they were the cutest things ever. So. <laughs> Those went in my bag first and everything else just wasn't that important compared to those. But it was just, it was such an awesome event. And like I said, I mean, I only got three individual gold medals. The rest were my my team. You know, I couldn't have done that without my team. So, yeah, it was just a really awesome trip looking back. It was so much fun. And, yeah, I mean, half half the things I achieve, I wouldn't be able to achieve it if it weren't for the numerous amount of people that are standing behind me who helped me get there. So it's I can never take full credit on my, by myself. Yeah. And then Bex, you um, you represented South Africa for the first time at the World Champs in 2019. How was that? Was that a, a goosebump wow. moment for you? What an experience! It's just even just that World Champs itself was so interesting. Um, yeah. So many things <laughs> happened, but I think I had put a plan down of how I wanted my seasons to go. Not necessarily that that was the way it was going to go, but as an athlete, you have to have a goal and mm. set yourself what you have to achieve that season. And going to World Champs, um, I think my swims weren't one of my my turn at IM was probably my best swim there, and yeah. it was my second fastest time I'd ever swum. Um, my other events were all right, um, but I I could come back and say don't worry about those swims because ultimately this was my first experience on the big global stage, senior world stage. And as a 16 year old, that's a ooh, quite a <laughs> young you are sometimes. Oh my gosh. It's quite a big thing. And I, I had to just stand back and say, wow, like look what yeah. I've just learned. Look what I've just experienced. I mean, I've seen people break records, like snatch some gold medals out. Like you wouldn't even think that that person would win. And it was just seeing this world stage made me hungry for more. I, I, you could very easily come back despondent or, oh my word, level so high. Um, And as a 16 year old, mentally, your mental state has to be prepared and ready for that event. And I was mentally prepared for that. I think I came back and I was, I, I want more. I was hungry and now I know what it's like out there and I know what it takes to get there and I'm prepared to do anything to get there. So just even being able to race against my my role models and the people who I ultimately want to beat in the future, it's just, yeah. it's so lovely to see how they control themselves and I just, that was just a learning experience for me. Yeah. And you say that you'll you'll do anything to be there and get there. Um, my wife used to swim with with Graham, and from what I've heard, you guys and please take this as best as it comes. Is you you don't essentially have a much of an outside life because you're not allowed to go out and party yeah. and drink and no. have a jaw and and all that kind of stuff because you up at four o'clock in the morning swimming and then you go to school or uni or whatever and then you back swimming in the afternoon it really is swimming has is your life yeah it's it's, much. it's our life but i don't want it to sound that make this sound like it's a, a, a it force but or a negative thing but it's ultimately our our job and our career at the moment it's mm, yeah, what yeah. we've sacrificed everything for i mean our social life at school not that it's a bad thing but 
mo- majority of my friends are my teammates at yeah. the training, and even on the weekends, we like, make we an get effort back together we make with an the team, you know, to go out and yeah, and spend time, go to the beach or go yeah. to the waterfall or just yeah. get out and do stuff. Um, we basically only have maybe Sunday because Saturday we're still recovering from training so we have one day in the week and it's funny because we always find ourselves near water it's either the ocean like Beck said or we go to a waterfall so we're always doing something it's really awesome that we all get along so well as well because then it doesn't seem like we're forced to go to training or we're forced to do this or we're forced to give up our social life because we're not we want to give it up because the environment we're in is actually really cool. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, our, our swimming friends, it makes us want to go to training even yeah. more, just yeah. to see them, because, I mean, being not an only child, but being at home now that my sister's overseas, uh, that's my connection to people my age, and mm-hmm. I'm just so excited to go to training because I get to communicate and chat to them, and we have very similar mindsets, mm-hmm. and dreams and ambitions that we want to achieve and that just yeah. makes the environment healthy but like like balance is key that's what yeah. we need yeah. we need balance yeah. in in life so yeah. i mean I we do. We <laughs> when, when we when we're chilling that. we actually that's healthy yeah yeah <laughs> and you talk about training and you talk about loving going to training um, I believe Graham uh, every year has a special Christmas present for you guys uh, that's, that he gives you. Tell us, tell us a bit about that. <laughs> so we have 100 hundreds every Christmas present, oh, but no. every year before the Olympic Games, it's 200 one hundreds. So now we're kind of confused because we did 200 one hundreds oh, last year. No. We're not sure no. if it's going to be this I'm year's not. Christmas present either. No, no. It's not but, happening. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't even get to 100 no. last year. So uh, there's no way I'm going to try and do that again. So it's, it's, a, it's a present, but you do as many as what you can get through. So it's not forced. Like, I don't think anyone finished the 200 one hundreds last year. <laughs> but, Only a crazy person would do that. I mean, many people got to 16Ks. So... It's phenomenal. That's brilliant. Um, Erin, you've become the first South African woman to clock sub 25 seconds in the 50 meter freestyle. That's that's quite an achievement, huh? Thank you. I just, only just by 0.05. Doesn't matter. Even if it was a 24.99, I'll still take it. (laughs) But it's just, it's just those tiny, tiny increments that you're just chasing all the time. I mean, it was only a 0.5. 8 PB, I think, but you know, anything comes, you'll take anything that you can get. And it's really cool that I was able to, to set that benchmark. I know there's going to be a lot of girls chasing that. And I mean, there's a lot of up and coming youngsters who are doing really, really well. And I have no doubt that in the next couple of years, they're going to be able to do it as well. So, um, yeah, it's just really awesome that if I look back, I, I looked at my mentors when I was older and saw that they would set standards and records and break records and I was like that's what I want to do and to be able to look now and see that I've mm-hmm. I've done that it's just really cool it just feels like a sense of achievement in itself so yeah, yeah. well congratulations we're very proud of proud of that um we've touched on Olympics or you guys have touched on Olympics um it must have been very difficult for obviously it to be postponed because you your whole training regime and 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 plan is geared towards now you need to revisit that obviously olympics still very much on on the plans for you both of course yeah very always much so. yeah um it's been our dream well yeah for me personally it's been a dream since i was 10 years old maybe yeah. not you know nine years old and it's just after you got your face in the water <laughs> when she got over I the, didn't the even know what swimming was and I decided <laughs> I was going to Olympics in 2020 and I've just been setting myself and just pushing myself and I mean I've, I've changed my whole schooling system around my training and to hear that it was postponed um, was devastating Yeah, but I think it's also a blessing it's more time to prepare so when we do yeah. go we can so even faster. Yeah. I mean, we waited, what, I said the other day, like I've waited 21 years to try and chase this dream so I can wait another year. Another year is, is nothing <laughs> compared to 21 years. Yeah. 
And do you guys, I mean, you look like you have a very uh, close bond. Do you have a sort of sister bond, Bex? Do you look up to Erin? And Erin, are you very possessive towards towards Bex? <laughs> It's actually funny because sometimes we go on trips and I feel like Bex is looking after me. It's the other <laughs> way around. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think with the traveling, I mean, I've known Erin for a while, but like I said, I only joined the squad really last year, January. So yeah. I think our bond has got quite mm. close in such a short period of time. Yeah. But we do, we travel a lot together. So, um, I mean, we traveled to Mauritius yeah. um, by last, last, year. last year and um we room together and you know rooming with someone you get to know them pretty well mm -hmm. so and i think we respect each other when we need space we need space um i mean that's why it's so easy yeah. living with each other now i'll go and have my own space she'll go and have her own yeah. space and yeah but it's yeah it's just really cool like i know no matter what Dex will always have my back like mm -hmm. if i'm going through a difficult time she's always there for me and vice versa you know like we can we like an outlet for one another. If you need to vent about something or if we need help or guidance or something, we can both go to each other. And it's weird. Like I don't see Bex as being younger than me. I don't know. Like sometimes I forget how young she is, but it's just really cool that age doesn't play any role in it. We read the same, you know, and that's when she first moved to Seagulls, I had no idea how important she would be in my life. And that's just, I'm so glad that she actually moved to Seagulls because she's changed my life in more ways than one. And it's really awesome. Oh, a real blessing. Um, there must be a lot of young girls in and around seagulls and in and around other um, swimming clubs and girls that just follow you on social media that, that really look up to you. Um, do you have any sort of words of wisdom or words of advice for if they wanted to take up a career in swimming and, and how they would get there to um, attain the levels that you guys have? Thank you. Okay. I think for me, the most important lesson that I've learned and I'm still trying to learn is, is to not compare yourself to others. You know, um, you could easily compare your chapter seven to someone else's chapter 15. And, you know, you can, if you do that, you can get despondent and you can think that you're never going to achieve and you're so far away. And I just, I believe personally, you need to focus on yourself and put yourself first and, you know, focus on your journey, not everyone else's journey. Because if you focus on their journey, you're not spending any time on yourself. And I think the most important thing to do is just, for me personally, is just not compare yourself and just trust your own process and go along with that process. That's, yeah. Wow. I, I think, um, like Erin said, you have to believe in mm -hmm. yourself. Um, I also think that bond with the coach and with your biokineticist and your physio, having a team behind you yeah. helps <clears throat> so, so much. Mm. It's so incredibly important. It just makes you as an athlete confident. You can trust and you all you have to do then is focus on your training and the workload yeah. that you're putting in. You um, can kind of like separate the weight that's weight on you. It's just it, not on, on you. And you can divide it. Too yeah, you have, to, you have to really it's so cliche and saying you have to believe in yourself. Um, yeah. Don't, if you have a bad swim, sit, sit on it for five minutes yeah. and move on. Uh, Learn from it, it. you can from it. It's the five minute rule my dad's always told me as well. Bex, five minute rule, you have five minutes to assess the situation, see what you could do differently next time and then move on mm -hmm. and grow through it because yeah. otherwise you, You'll just th overthink and mm. go through the, the same thoughts the whole time and it stunts your growth. So, yeah, just trust the process, trust your coach and because that's incredibly important. Mm. And, yeah, remember to always just have fun and, and yeah. smile through it because yeah. ultimately we do this because we love the sport yeah. and it's something we enjoy doing. So as soon as it doesn't become fun, then there's almost no point in doing yeah. it. It's true. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. You lose that passion and you lose that uh, sense of fun. You're not going to perform to the levels. Um, just in closing, Erin, um, at the All Africa Games, standing on that podium eight times, hearing the South African national anthem, that really must have been a thing of dreams. You know, it's it's actually funny because you'd think just at an African level, like you wouldn't get emotional, but 
for me, I was more emotional standing on the podium with my teammates because I could hear them singing alongside me. And just that pride and unity in our country was just absolutely amazing. And it's a moment, like, you'll never forget that. So I can't imagine what it would feel like to stand on the Olympic <laughs> podium. I don't, don't even want to know. I think I'd be a wreck if I had to stand on there. But just like just I said, like I said, being on there with my teammates, it's the best feeling in the world. And it's why I love doing what I, what I do is because we get to share that passion for swimming and just I don't know like it brings a sport can bring a nation together like we just watched with the rugby world cup I mean it's incredible and just that is one of my my passions is to be able to do that is just bring a country together and it's just really cool that I'm in such a sport where you can do that where you have the grounds to do that yeah so it's really cool yeah ladies it's been awesome chatting to you today and thanks for joining us on, on sport SA daily diary um Good luck with uh, your careers. Good luck with the Olympics next year. No doubt we'll, we'll see you guys on the podium in the in the very near future. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank wow. you so much for having Thank us. Thank you. We've yeah. really, really enjoyed this call. Yeah. It's been it's been lovely. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Look out for tomorrow's episode of Sport SA Daily Diaries, where we chat to Supersport presenter Colin Chinga.